Well, good morning and welcome to this Sunday morning service for Koi Assembly of God. We want to say that we hope that you've had a, a great week, not a very eventful week, but a great week in the Lord, and we are hoping that you are ready to worship and praise the Lord this morning. I do have a, a testimony I want to give you first thing before we jump into worship, and that is this. Last week, um, we sent out a message saying that you would... Uh, not have, we would not have an in-person service this week because of possible exposure to the COVID virus for some of the, the families in our church. But I want to report to you today that all those tests came back negative. And so praise God for that. Uh, and and um, we're going to meet back here, plan to just go ahead and plan to meet back here next week. We're going to have full services next week. Also, don't hesitate. If you want to stay home, make sure you stay home. We don't want to push you. We don't want you to feel like you're obligated to be here just because because we're open. But for those of us that do want to meet, we're going to go ahead and meet. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. And I want to just say praise the Lord that those folks that, that thought they were exposed, uh, that they did not have it. So that is, that is a great testimony to the Lord. Uh, we, we love the Lord and we're thankful for that. And so I want to open up in prayer this morning. Um, not a whole lot of announcements to make. We're not doing a whole lot of stuff right now. So um, we do have a few people in the building with us this morning that's going to be helping us minister. Uh, and a few people uh, came just because they wanted to be here. So don't feel left out. If you, if you see somebody or hear somebody shout amen or something like that, don't feel left out. You just shout right back at them. We won't hear you, but you can shout back at them. So if you're in the building, would you stand with us this morning? If you're at home and you want to stand, go ahead and stand. Uh, we want you to to enter into the worship this morning and enter into what the Lord has for us today. So, God, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you did last Sunday, Lord. Uh, possibly 12, 10 to 12 people, Lord, gave their hearts to you, Lord, and, and that is something that, that we should celebrate. I've been celebrating that all week, Lord, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that you moved and you had your way last week. Lord, we ask you to do the same today. Although they won't be here in service, Lord Jesus, you can still move and you can still do what it is that you want to do for everyone, Lord, at home or wherever they're at today, Lord. So I pray that no matter where we are, we would feel your presence. We would enter into worship. We would take this time seriously, Lord. This is not a slack Sunday. This is not an off Sunday. This is a Sunday that we're still in your presence, Lord. And so I'm praying right now that you'll move according to your will. Have your way today, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. Would you worship the Lord with us this morning? Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, oh, let the key of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song you are good come on sing it never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down, 
You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Cause you are good, good. into the room <clears throat> everything changes darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring and when you walk into the room every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you Sing it again when you walk, when you walk into the room. Everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. And nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you <coughs> we love you we love you and we'll never stop we can't live without you Jesus we love you can't get enough, all this is for you, Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you walk in the room, when you walk into the sickness, sickness starts to vanish. Every hopeless situation ceases to exist And when you walk into the room The dead begin to rise Cause there is resurrection life in all you do We love you We love you And we'll never stop we can't live without you, Jesus. We love you. We can't get enough. All this is for you, Jesus. <clears throat> it's all for you, Lord. It's all for you. Hallelujah. This is my prayer this morning. Come and consume. So come and consume, God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume, God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. Want you come and consume, so come and consume, God. All we are, we give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you, we want you. Come and consume, come and consume, God. All we are, we give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you, we want you. We love you, 
we love you And we'll never stop We can't live without you Jesus, we love you We can't get enough All this is for you Jesus, Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. If you do, I encourage you just to give him a hand clap of praise right there where you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll have to excuse my voice this morning. I'm still having some trouble. Amen. This next song, you may or may not know, it's a rather old song, but it's, it's called Give Us Clean Hands. And, and so what I, what I wanted to say about this song, what this song jumps out to me and says and speaks to my heart is this, that, that we have to bow our hearts to God. We have to get on our knees we have to give ourselves to the lord and and those are just the lyrics of the song and and that just jumps right out to me especially today especially in these times especially what we're going through right now as a nation uh globally this pandemic that's going on every everything that is that is evil and everything that is unrest in this this society is an enemy it's a, it's an attack sent by the enemy and so if we're going to combat that we need to get on our knees and we need to make sure that we have clean hands and clean hearts in the lord's presence amen, amen. We bow our hearts, we bow our hearts, and we bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. Sing that again. We bow our hearts. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. <clears throat> we turn our eyes on evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. So give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. And give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh, God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, oh, God of Jacob. Oh, God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face, oh, God of Jacob. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, oh Spirit come make us humble, we turn our eyes from evil things, oh Lord we cast down our idols, so give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. 
Let us not lift our souls to another. God, let us be a generation that sees, that seeks your face, oh God of oh Jacob. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees and seeks your face, oh God of oh Jacob. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks and seeks your face, oh God of oh Jacob. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, oh God of oh Jacob. Give us pure hearts, but let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. Oh God, let us be a generation that sees, that sees your face, oh God of oh Jacob. Amen. How many of you know that when we seek the Lord, that is when we find what we need? Amen. The Word of God says, when you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. And so this morning, we want to pray for the needs in this church. Um, and so what I want you to do yes. is that if you're online, I want you just to comment your needs. And if you're here this morning and you have a need, I just want to ask you just to raise your hand. Um, we all have things that we need God to do in our life right now. Um, the world has things that they need God to do, prayers that need to be answered. And um, it blesses me so much that we serve a God that is more than capable of answering those prayers. And so this morning, I just want to lift up the needs of the church, the congregation, um, this country, this nation. And I just want to pray that, that the God of Jacob will answer our prayers as we seek them. So pray with us, Lord. Father God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you that we can come to your house, Lord. We can be in your presence, Lord. But, but even when we're not in your house, Lord, we're still in your presence, Father God. You go with us, Lord. Everywhere that we go, Lord, you're more than capable of meeting each and every need, Father. And so I pray, Lord, as the needs are commented this morning, Lord, I pray that if anybody in this church, Lord, is struggling, Lord, maybe they need healing, Father, or maybe they need guidance, Lord, maybe they just need to hear from you, Lord. I pray that you would be faithful, God, to meet those needs this morning, Lord. I pray that you would be with Pastor as he brings the word this morning, Lord, that your hand of anointing, God, would just be over him, Father. And I pray for this nation right now, Lord. There's no secret, Lord, that we are in a dark time, Father. But I, I just have to believe, Lord, that in those dark times, Father, that you will be the light, Lord. You are going to be what will guide us, Lord, out of this situation, Lord. And we will come out stronger on the other end, Father. And so I pray today, Lord, as we deal with these things, Father God, as we move forward, Lord, during this time, that we would lean on you, Lord. That we would find strength in you, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, that you would meet each and every one of those needs, Lord. And I pray it in your name. Amen. Amen. We're going to get ready to take up our morning tithe and offering this morning. And so if you're online, um, I just want to go over a few ways for you to give. Uh, you can online the links in the comments. But you can text the word to give to 601-300-6140. Or you can mail your check in to 719 J.C. Warren Road, Preston, Mississippi, 39354. And so I'm going to pray over the offering this morning, and then Miss Aaron's going to come up and, and lead us in a song. And so let us pray. Father God, Lord, we're so grateful that we get to give to you, Lord. It's such a privilege 
um, to be able to give to you and, and provide, Lord, and help further your kingdom in the ministry you want to do here, Lord, not only in this country, Lord, but right here in Preston, Mississippi, Father God, in Coy Assembly. And I pray this morning, Lord, as we give, Lord, that we would give with a pure heart, Lord, a pure mind, Father, and you would just bless the gift and the giver, Father. And I pray this in your name. Amen. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus King of endless worth No one could express How much you deserve and poor though all I have is yours every single breath I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it Cause it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus Amen. Aren't you glad that it's all about Him and not us? Amen. Got tangled up in my cords. Apologize for that. I sure do. Amen. We hope and we pray that even though you're not here in service, you will take advantage of what the Lord is bringing to you today. You will take advantage of the worship service um, as far as the, the songs go, you'll take advantage of that, and most of you have, I'm sure. You'll take advantage of 
the giving part of the service, that online deal, we, we didn't have a few months ago, but thank the Lord we, we have that available to us now. So you not being here will not hinder your act of worship to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want you to turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 59. And while you're, while you're turning there, let me just say this. You can see that we, we've kind of got some construction going on here. We got one TV on and one TV off. We had that last week. Now we still have a TV here, but we took this one off. We bought some new TVs. We had a monitor go out. And last night during the process of installation, we run into a snag. So we were one TV less than, than what we would normally be. So I apologize for that. Um, we, we, we don't like to have that presentation out in front of you. But at that point, Saturday night, there's nothing that we could really do. So um, thank you so much for looking over that and um, being faithful to the Lord to give us a pass because we all need passes every once in a while. Isaiah chapter 59, uh, I'm going to read the whole chapter, so if you want to stand, you're welcome to stand, but if you don't want to stand, it's going to be lengthy because I'm going to kind of go through this all together. Um, but before we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Jesus, today, you know the condition of my heart. You know the condition of all of our hearts, God. I believe that you have shown me this portion of scripture to bring correction today, Lord. The title, the heading of the, of the chapter is Sin, Confession, and Redemption. That's what we are in life, Lord. Those are the three phases that we find ourselves in life, God. And I pray that today we will understand that we are a sinful person. And we'll understand the need to confess our sins and our faults to you, Lord, and that when we do, you are the redemption for those things, Lord Jesus. And so I pray as we go through this service, Lord, that you would have me to say only the things that you want me to say, nothing more and nothing less. God, we're fighting a battle today. We're fighting a battle today, Lord. And this scripture talks about raising a standard and so I'm asking you today, Lord Jesus, to help us go through this, help us to learn from this, help us to apply this to our life so that we can raise the standard like you did in this scripture, Lord. In your name I pray, amen. amen. And so Isaiah 59, I want to break down the first uh, eight verses there first, first nine verses there. And it says this, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. Let me read that again. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. For your hands are stained with blood and your fingers with guilt. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads his case with integrity. They rely on the empty arguments and speak lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. They hatch vipers, or they hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's web, and whoever eats their eggs will die. And when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Their cow cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil deeds and acts of violence. And they're in, her, in their hands. Their feet rush to sin. And they are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are evil thoughts. They ruin and destruction. And mark, uh, ruin and destruction mark their ways. The, the way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their past. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks in them will know peace. And then verse 9 says, So justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. We walk in deep shadows. Verses 1 through 8 is portraying to us the sins that we have in our lives, the things that we do wrong, the things that we do against God. That's what he's, he's listing out some of those things here. 
If you look back in chapter 58, he talks about a few more of those things, like not giving faithfully in your tithe, not fasting the way that you're supposed to fast. So there are some things that are not necessarily wrong things, sinful things necessarily, but if we do them with the wrong heart, we do them with the wrong content, we do them with the wrong intentions, then they're not pleasing to God. They're fruitless. And so these are some of these things. Does this, does that verse 1 through 8, does that not sound like America today? Does it not? We rush into sin. Our evil deeds, our acts of violence, and they're on our own hands. We're swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are evil thoughts. Ruin and destruction mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There's no justice in their paths. I want to point out to you the first few uh, words there or the first phrase of verse 4. When we're living a sinful life, it says that no one calls for justice. When we're away from the Lord, we don't want justice. Or we want justice, but we don't know what justice is. No one is calling for justice. Very few people today with the economy like it is, with the nation like it is, the sinful attack, the evil that is in this world that Satan has plunged us into. Guess what? No one's calling for justice because we've been so blinded and we've been so deceived and we've done that because it's, it's been so long since it began to happen. If you go look at you know, those Disney movies that, that we all thought were so sweet and so innocent. If you go back and watch some of those, you can see underlying messages in those things. You can see them. Now, we've been to Disney World. We love Mickey Mouse. You know, all our kids grew up watching Mickey Mouse. You know, but if you look back at some of those things, you can see some, some, what, some hidden agendas or what at least seems to be hidden agendas. Wide world, publicized, published. People love Disney, and with good reason, because we think it's the most magical place on earth. We've been deceived. We've been deceived. I'm not calling for a boycott of Disney today. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just giving you an example of how Satan has been slipping it in so calmly, so simply, we don't even realize what's going on. It's the small foxes that spoil the vine, right? There was a song that came out probably 10 years ago. I think the, the uh, group's name was Casting Crowns, but it's called a slow fade. It's a slow fade when darkness turns to gray, right? It don't just happen immediately. Satan's not just going to plunge into your life and say, hey, why don't you do this? Or hey, why don't you do that? This is the destruction that I have for you. He's not going to do that. So he lulls us into sin. He quietly slips those things into us so that we won't notice it, so that we won't be paying attention, right? He does that through music. He does that through entertainment, all of entertainment. That You have to be careful what you watch. You have to be careful what you listen to. You have to be careful what you let into your homes. You have to be careful the social media apps that you have. And you have to be careful the social media apps that your children have. Because he is slipping it in. Everywhere. There's nothing untouched. There's nothing unscathed by him. There's nothing left unturned by him. You wonder why he deceives so many? Because he's good at his job. If he's destined to hell and he knows there's no escape for him, then he's going to be really good at pounding people to get some people to be with him in hell, to trick as many people as possible. And so verse 4 says, no one calls for justice. No one calls for justice. And verse 9 says that since no one called for justice, you can see that justice is far from us. As a whole society today, justice is far from us. Yes, there are bright spots here and there. There are Christian lighthouses here and there. There are churches that are doing magnificent things for Christ. But as a whole, society is justiceless. 
We have no justice. And the justice that we think we want is so misconstrued that we're calling to defund police. The protection that we have, the protection that we need, we're calling for the defunding of police. We're calling for the aborting of millions and millions and millions of babies. We want those places to stay alive. And guess what they're trying to do? They're trying to fund it so that we have to pay for them through our tax dollars. Now, you and I wouldn't walk up there and, and fund an abortion. But if they can make us pay for it through our tax dollars, then we're still funding abortion. That's not right. <clears throat> That's not right. Where's the justice for those babies? Where's the justice for those homeless people? Yes, I know some of them choose that, that lifestyle. I know that. And some of them want to be there. I know that because it's easier to do that than to get a job and live in society like a normal person. I get that. And that's the kind of justice that this world thinks is justice. Let him do what he wants to do. Let him be what he wants to be. That's not a bad motto until you see uh, homeless people all over the place. That's not a bad motto until you, you see the effects of it long term, right? Right? I'm not against our Constitution. I believe our Constitution 100%. Every bit of it. I believe it. I support it. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be an American. But society has been misguided for so long that the justice that we think that we want is not the justice that we really need. We don't understand that justice, true justice, comes from God comes from the Almighty One. So, in verse 4 we say, no one calls for justice. And in verse 9, because we haven't called for justice, the right kind of justice, justice is nowhere near to us. So let's pick up there in verse 9 and continue reading. So justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the walls, feeling our way like men without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears, and we moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none. We look for deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses... Listen to this. For our offenses are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities and rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, fomenting or fomenting oppression and revolt, underlying lies, and our hearts have been or have conceived. And so just so you know, fomenting there is the word that is used in my, my uh, translation. And that means to stir up. So we stir up oppression. And we stir up revolts. And we stir up lies. And, and our hearts have conceived those things. So justice is driven back. Justice is driven back. And that's our actions. We drive that justice away from us. Because of why? Because our offenses to God are many. Our offenses are ever with us. We have to acknowledge that we need a Savior, right? It's not enough to know that we need one. Knowing is, understanding is the first step. Knowing and understanding. But we must have to acknowledge those things, our actions in front of our, our, our Lord, our misdeeds. We have, to, we have to make those things known in front of our our Lord, he knows them anyway. He wants us to know that we know what they are. Why is it important that we know what they are? So we can turn from them. So we can walk away from them. So we cannot get caught back up in them again. So many times we come to this altar and we have a, an emotional experience and we think that, that, that is, that's what's going to set us free and that will help along the journey. But an emotional experience is not what sets you free. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that sets you free. It's time in his presence. It's the anointing of God that breaks the yoke of bondage in your life. And if you're not spending time in the presence of God, there is no anointing in your life. There is no anointing to break that yoke. So you're still bound by that yoke. 
You're bound by that yoke until you understand what is suppressing you, until you understand what is bringing you down, until you understand the things that you're supposed to walk away from, the things that separate you from God. Sin separates us from God. That's the only thing that separates us from God. It's not your mother. It's not your daddy. It's not your husband. It's not your friends at school. It's not your cousin that teaches you to do bad things. It's not. Sin is what separates you from God. And it's up to you and it's up to me to understand that and walk away from those things, to repent from those things and walk away. Because if we can walk away, then we can be where Christ wants us to be. Amen? So in verse 14, justice is driven back because of our actions. And our righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honestly, cannot enter. But praise the Lord in verse 15, truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. Let me just say this. Whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. Isn't that what's going on today? If you're not fitting that agenda, if you, don't, uh, if you don't think like they think, if you're not pushing what they're pushing, then you become prey as well, right? If you think for yourself, then you are the prey. You are the prey. The evil will consume whatever is not on their side. It will fight. It will battle. It will go into war against whatever is not on their side. So the evil, the evil becomes prey. If you shun evil, you become prey. If you don't agree, you get trampled. Uh, verse 15, the Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. The Lord is looking on America today, and he's displeased that there's no justice. The Lord is looking into your life today, and he's displeased that there's no justice. Remember we said that our sins will come up before us against the Lord, or come up before the Lord. And we'll have to answer for those things. And if our sin is greater than anything else in our lives, then we're not going to have the forgiveness that we need from God. We're not going to be able to access that. We have to understand those things. We have to admit those things. And we have to give them over to the Lord. The Lord was displeased because there was no justice. He saw... I want us to pay attention to some, some nouns here, some pronouns here. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm worked salvation for him. And his own righteousness sustained him. He put on a righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so he will repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands for their due. From the west, men will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood, and that the breath of the Lord shall drive along. Now, in the King James, I like what it says better in the King James right there. Um, it says, for the enemy, when he comes in like a flood, the Lord Jesus will lift up a standard yes. against it. He'll lift up a standard against that. That standard is not your standard. Yes. Your standard has failed you. That standard is his standard. His is the only standard that we should look to. His standard is justice in our lives like we've been talking about. And that's both individually and corporately as a church, as a whole. Globally, as a church, as a whole. The enemy is attacking us. He is coming in like a flood. Everywhere we look, the enemy is coming. He is attacking. He is pursuing. But praise God, the word of the Lord says in Isaiah 59, 19, that the Lord will raise up a standard against it. He will raise up a standard against the evil in this nation, against the unrest that's going on in our nation today. He will raise up a standard against this coronavirus. Amen. He will raise up a standard against evil. The standard has been raised. It's up to us to see that it goes forward. 
How does it go forward? Through you and me, through our surrender to the Lord, to the things that we can give back to him, being in church, bringing other people to church, talking to people on your, your workplace, at your job, at your school, whatever it is, you are part of the standard. But you got to get right. And you got to stay tight. Or you won't be a part of the standard. You cannot be a part of the standard. Earlier this week, I began to sing a song that I sang as a, a child growing up in church. And, or Ethan will say that it's probably 70 years ago when I was a child. The truth is, is it probably was about 30, 35 years ago. And the words of that song, the course of that song says, Are we walking into the enemy's camp, laying our weapons down, shedding our armor as we go and leaving it on the ground? Are we doing that? We've done that as Christians. We've done that. We've walked into this world and we put our weapons down. We've took our armor off. And so now we're seeing the... the, the the evil advance against us because we have nothing to fight with. We've laid it all down. Are we walking into the enemy's camp and laying our weapons down? Yes. Have we shed our armor and took it off as we've went about life? Yes. We've left it on the ground. But we've got to be strong. This is the conclusion to that course. In the power of his might to prove to the enemy that we are the army of the Lord. And we've won the victory. Listen, just because we know what the Bible says, that in the end we win, that's not good enough. It's not good enough just to bide our time and wait until the Lord comes to fight that battle. It's not enough. We know, we know that he's going to win. But we don't have to be trampled in the process. We can be strong. We can be mighty. We can defeat Satan. We can stand up against our foe. And we can win the battles along the way. I get tired of losing battles. I get tired of getting punched in the teeth by Satan. Sometimes I want to be punched. I mean, sometimes I want to be doing the punching. I don't like to get punched. Do you? Do you? I don't like to get punched. If I'm going to be in a fight, I want to win that fight. I don't want to get whipped. I don't, I don't, you know why? Because your friends will talk it around. Did you see that the other day? They had, listen, pull it up on YouTube. They, had, they recorded it. Instead of stopping the fight, they were recording it. Instead of helping somebody out that's getting beat down, we're recording stuff and putting it on, online and, and praising the fighting, praising the hatred, praising the evil. That's what people do now. That's part of the fight against us, stirring that hatred up, stirring that fear up, stirring that evil up. That's part of Satan's tactics. But if I'm going to be fighting Satan, I know I can't win on my own, but I can win here. Yes. And I can win through Christ. Yes. He is our weapon. He is our justice. He is our standard. Yes. And if we set our standard according to his standard, we will win. Yes. We will win battles along the way. We might lose some, but that's because of humanness, human flesh. That's because we are weak. In our flesh. The minute we start walking away from this, the minute we start not doing our, our prayer times with the Lord, we begin to walk away from the power. We begin to walk away from the strength, from the might that we have in our lives. But the minute we jump into this thing and we begin to read and it begins to consume your life, the Lord will fill you with power. He will fill you with knowledge so that you can understand how to fight the fight that Satan is bringing to you. I don't want to get whipped. I want to be the one whipping. Right? Well, he said that that'll get around. People will know that you're weak in the Lord. The devils, the demons, they'll spread it around their, their camp. Oh, he's weak. Oh, yeah, you, you got Don't worry about it. Just go ahead. There's no, there's no fight in him. He's already lost a battle. And we have if we don't gird our loins. We have if we don't pick up our weapons. And we have if we don't put on the armor of God. We've lost. And we have if we don't fill ourselves with the goodness and the knowledge of how to fight. 
the wisdom that the Lord would choose to let us fight with comes from being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The might, the boldness, the courage, the strength that we need comes from the Holy Spirit. We need that. We need that. Verse 19 says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Verse 20 says, the Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sin, declares the Lord. And then he goes on and he gives us a covenant. If you'll do that, if you'll acknowledge your sin, if you'll confess your sin and you'll let me redeem you, I'm going to give you a covenant today. And this is the covenant. As for me, this is my covenant with them. This is the Lord's covenant with you and me, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you and my words that I have put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of your children or from the mouths of their descendants from this time on and forever, says the Lord. Do you want your children to know God? Do you want your children's children to know God? Amen. There's a song that Cody Carnes and Carrie Job sing, and it's called The Blessing. And it talks about the blessings of God being passed on from, to your children and their children and their children and their children and their children. And we kind of have a joke about it at the house, and we'll just say, and their children, and their children, and everybody's children. All right? But that is the covenant that we have with God. That if you honor me, and if you give your life to me, and you continue to do that consistently day in and day out, then I will cover you with my blessings. I will give you and make you righteous, I will make you holy. I will do that, but you are not holy if I'm not in you. The Bible says that there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none righteous without the standard being raised, without the justice being given to us from our Savior. Amen? Amen? Man, I, I, I have chewed on this all week. I have, I have looked at this all week. I have... Went over this in my mind all week, and I'm so thankful that the Spirit of the Lord raises a standard against my enemies. When they come in like a flood, what does that mean? Flood waters destroy everything. They take over everything. They engulf everything. And so no matter what you're going through in life, if you feel like you're totally engulfed and you're being swept downstream, turn to God. Because when you're righteous... And you turn to him, he will raise up a standard against you, against the enemy. He'll raise up that standard against the enemy. It came to me early this week. My family is going through some sickness right now. A lot of my family is going through some sickness right now. Okay? And this verse rang in my spirit. I knew the verse. I couldn't remember where it was. I picked up my phone. I Googled it. I found it. I read that verse, and I was like, yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it right there. And so I went back, and I read the chapter, and then I started reading some commentary, and then it was talking about the chapter before that, and and so I started reading the chapter before that, and and I sat in here the other day, and I played a song, and it's one of the songs that we sang this morning, When You Walk Into the Room. When you walk into the room, I made a video recording. I did a devotional about this to my family and encouragement. It was nine minutes long and it would not let me send the file. (laughs) Ain't that just like the devil? I wanted to send encouragement. I wanted to send a video saying that I'm praying for you and I'm worshiping for you so that this sickness will leave. If you remember the second verse in that song says, sickness has to vanish. When he walks into the situation, when he comes into your life, everything has to move. Everything has to change. When light enters darkness, there's no, no, no more darkness, is it? Amen. There's no more darkness. And so I prepared that. And it said, file too large. Couldn't send it on messenger. We have a, a farmer family group. Now, I couldn't send it on messenger. So I tried to send it by text. I tagged everybody in a text. And wouldn't you know it wouldn't send it through by text. File too large. And so I took the scripture. 
And I took a, a brief portion of that scripture and I broke it down, basically what I was saying on the video, and it wouldn't send that. I tried three different times to get the message through to my family this week. But you know what? The Lord knows. And my prayers from here are just as good as if I was standing in that building praying for them. My family has spent time in the hospital over the last two weeks, as many of yours have. There are many of you that are watching today that are dealing with uh, COVID and different sicknesses. There are. And nobody can visit you. You might be laying in a hospital bed. You might be sitting at home. Nobody can visit you because they don't want to get the, the virus. You can't be exposing other people to it. But guess what? Our prayers can move through buildings. Our prayers can cover the expanse of distance and time. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because when Jesus walks into the room, everything changes. Every hopeless situation ceases to exist. And when you walk into the room, my Lord, I love that next one. The dead begin to rise. And there's resurrection life in everything that he does. Everything that he does. So if you're dead today, the Bible says that if you're living in sin, you are dead in your trespasses and your sins. But if you let Jesus walk into the heart, into your heart, into the door of your heart today, then resurrection will find you and salvation will be yours today. It will be yours today. So I pray that this message has meant something to you today. I pray that you will find the Lord today. I pray that you will understand your sin, that you will confess your sin, and that you will let the Lord be the redeemer of your life. Redeemer of your life. And so I want to close like this today. I want to say a prayer, and maybe, maybe you need the Lord to, to overwhelm you. Maybe you need the Lord to raise a standard up against the flood against the enemy in your life. And so what I would encourage you to do today is check yourself, check your spirit, check your heart. And if you need to invite the Lord into your heart again, then I want you to do that today. I'm going to pray. I'm going to say a prayer and you can repeat that prayer after me. You can say a prayer on your own, whatever you want to do. But I want to make sure that you understand that you need Jesus. I want to make sure that you understand that you are dead. Yet you are walking around in the flesh, but in the spirit you are dead. And you need life. You need to be resurrected by the giver of life. And the only way is through Jesus. Let's pray. God, we love you. I'm thankful for this word that you've given us today, Lord. I know that there are others that needed to hear this. Lord, it rang so true in my spirit this week. And I know that if it's ringing in my spirit, it should ring in other people's spirits as well, God. And so I pray that recognition would come to those who need you. Those who need to rededicate their life to you like we had last week. Some for the first time ever and some ha have come back to you last week, Lord Jesus. No matter the situation in their life, Lord, you are still the resurrection and you are still the life. And no one comes to the Father except through the Son. And so, Jesus, I pray that you would receive them when they pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would see me where I'm at and that you would forgive me of my sin. I know that I've been wrong. I know that I've done wrong. I know that I have lived a sinful life. I've heard that everyone is born into sin. And I've heard that there is no life outside of Jesus. So Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Bring life into this body. Bring life into this, this man or woman. Bring life into this spirit and let me breathe again. I don't want to be dead anymore. I want to be alive and I want to be alive in you. So Lord, I dedicate my heart to you I dedicate my life to you. And I will serve you from this point on till my dying day. In your name I pray. Amen.
and amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. Um, like I said, just a reminder, we will be back in service next week. If you don't feel comfortable, please stay at home. We don't want to force you to do anything. We don't want you to feel obligated to do anything. But for those of you that would like to join us next week, we will be live in service again. God bless you. Have a good afternoon.